Hello Black Heart community, thank you for giving us an opportunity to speak at Black Heart USA 2020. Today we'll be tackling uh, the topic of building cybersecurity strategies for emerging industries in Sub-Saharan Africa. I'm Laura Teach and I'll be speaking alongside Evelyn Kilel. We are the co-founders of SheHacks KE, which is a community of women in cybersecurity in Kenya. We have different programs for our women where we bring together learners and experts to share their knowledge and experiences through our webinars, boot camps, or mentorship. So why this talk? Towards the end of last year and the beginning of this year, we were trying to come up with a curriculum for, the, for our community members. Uh, we wanted something that could fit the needs of the industry. So we went uh, looking for data um, to give us information about how the security landscape in sub-Saharan looks like, Africa looks like. And in that process, we found it difficult to get data that were specific to sub-Saharan Africa. We started asking ourselves the question, if we do not have data about sub-Saharan Africa, how then can we come up with proper strategies for the cybersecurity industry? The other reason we submitted this talk is to create awareness on the cybersecurity industry and communities across sub-Saharan Africa. We wanted people to know that there, there is an existing cybersecurity industry here, and as much as it needs better or more expansion, we still exist, and we need um, to work together, to come together with the different stakeholders to make the industry better. And the third reason is to encourage professionals in sub-Saharan Africa, professionals and enthusiasts. So we wanted people to see that there's an existing community and the industry needs more professionals. So we want to encourage more people to try to uh, join the industry, to join communities in cybersecurity in sub-Saharan Africa, and to work together to build this industry. So where do we start? We came up with four questions that could help us uh, come up with a curriculum. So we, we, the four questions would all together work to come up with a proper solution for the industry in terms of building the curriculum and building the strategies. The questions are, the first one was, what are some of the most used technologies? Now this would give us an idea of what the uh, technology landscape looks like in sub-Saharan Africa, what are the most used technologies, so that we get to understand what threats come with these technologies. The second question, what does the threat landscape look like? Now after figuring out what the technology are that we use the most, then we'd get to find out what the threat landscape in the region looks like. The third one was what are some of the effects of uh, cyber threats. Now this is not just to the economy but to the different stakeholders, the governments, the companies and even to individuals. We wanted to figure out what are some of the effects or what effects have um, cyber crime activities have had in, in sub-Saharan Africa region. And the fourth and final one is what has worked in the past. Because we do not want to come up with uh, strategies from scratch, we are going to repurpose the ones the, the uh, activities that have worked in the past or the solutions that have worked in the past. So we are going to discuss all these four questions in detail as we go by. I now welcome Eve to take us to the threat uh, landscape in sub-Saharan Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, for kickstarting the presentation. My name is Evelyn Kilel once more, and I'll be taking you uh, through the cyber threat landscape in sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, before that, I'll take you through the prediction of the, uh, the prediction of growth in the ICT market in the region. So um, the total sub-Saharan ICT market is predicted to grow from 95.4 billion in 2020 to 104.2 billion by 2023. So uh, this is due to the rapid digitization and uh, falling costs of the ICT, uh, of the ICT, um, ICT markets. So um, the key areas of growth in the region is mobile. Uh, the key areas of growth in the region is mobile money, 
why has it penetrated the sub-Saharan Africa is because of the unbanked population in the region that have that are that are able to access the the different finances through mobile money platforms. So uh, the key example of um, mobile money penetration in the region is M-Pesa, which is the leading in Kenya, and it has more than above 30 million consumers in the region. Additionally, um, there are new other technologies that are being adapted in the region. One of them is cloud technology, which is highly adopted by the small medium enterprises. Why cloud technology for these small medium enterprises? This is because of the ease, ease of use for of the cloud platforms that we have. So uh, also to that, the new other technologies, one of them is blockchain and big data. These new technologies introduce new threats and vulnerabilities, which uh, ensure, uh, uh, ensures that, uh, which is an indicator that we need to build a better and robust cybersecurity uh, uh, frameworks to support in the, in the new vulnerabilities that are introduced by the new technologies that these markets consume. So uh, additionally to that, most organizations have not really considered uh, the, the cyber security, um, the cyber security impact, cyber security impact in, in the region. That means there's need to, to have more investments for cyber security in the region. With regards to that, uh, I, I introduce, uh, I let Laura to take over the common threats in Sub-Saharan Africa. So Eve has taken us through what the threat landscape looks like in Sub-Saharan Africa. Now we're going to talk about the threats that are common in the region. Um, an organization called Seriano came up with data that, that showed that the most um, commonly targeted industry in the region in terms of cybersecurity are government and the banking sector. Now, Eve has told, talked about the mobile money market in the industry. There's an 82% penetration of mobile money in the sub-Saharan Africa region. And with this came the installation of new ATMs because people needed to convert the money, the digital money, into physical cash. Now, this brought about new, um, other new uh, threats or attacks in that sector. Now, most uh, countries in the region have taken advantage of mobile telecommunications to expand their businesses, and attackers are using this as an avenue to get money and to get sensitive information from these people. Now, um, one of the common attacks are, of course, social engineering. You've heard of the Sakawa boys or the famous Yahoo boys, the Nigerian prince, um, where they manipulate people into giving them uh, sensitive information and, most importantly, money. Now, the same threats are common in the region where, um, in, in like the M-Pesa case, you get someone calling you uh, pretending to have sent you money and then they ask for for, uh, for a refund now for most people or for most uh, mobile security mobile service providers they have services that allows you allows money to be refunded without the customer actually refunding it back themselves but most most people are not aware of this and they end up sending back money that wasn't sent to them in the first place and that's how people end up losing money Another common threat um, is SIM swap. Now, this is especially common to people who use mobile money, which, as I said, are very many people in, in the sub-Saharan Africa region. How this works is that someone um, social engineers you by sending you phishing links, and you end up giving them your sensitive information, mostly your passwords and PIN and other identification. Now, using this identification, uh, they uh, they take your or steal your um, your information and then call the mobile service provider, asking them 
to block the SIM card and they say I am the owner of the SIM card these are my registration details and they give all these details that they have stolen from the victim mainly their identity um, their pins and passwords and all this other identifying information now Having this information, the mobile service provider will know that this is a legitimate case of, of someone who's lost their SIM card or who, who's lost their phone. So they end up blocking the, the number of the person who's the legitimate owner of this number. And then the attacker, who now has the new number, uses this new number to generate one-time passwords. And with this one-time passwords, they're able to get into the victim's banking, um, online ba banking, and still cash from them. Now that is one way that attackers can get money from unsuspecting um, clients. The other way, um, or one of the other common threats is internal fraud, which is more common in the banking sector as well. Here, um, usually uh, employees of banks or even mobile service providers work with outside attackers and they liaise and they end up stealing money from uh, victims. They mostly target um, deceased clients who may not, um, someone may not be able to follow up with this person's money. And that's how money is lost in the banking sector. Now we talked about the government being one of the other hardest hit uh, industries. Uh, last year in Kenya, for example, that is in 2019, 19 government sites were hacked um, in one day. So these threats are common, uh, not just in Kenya, but other countries in sub-Saharan Africa as well, where governments are targeted for information, for fun, and just for stealing um, sensitive information in case they have stored any of this information in their sites. Now, what are some of the economic effects of cybercrime? In sub-Saharan Africa, a lot of countries have lost a big amounts of money to cybercrime. South Africa, for example, lost an um, they lose an estimated $573 million annually, uh, while Nigeria loses $500 million annually as well, and Kenya loses $36 million annually. Now, this in proportion to the GDP of these countries uh, is very big loss to, to cybercrime. And besides the economic losses, there's also um, losses to individual companies where they still they, they lose sensitive information, they lose clients, and they lose money as well. So there are a lot of um, very many cyber um, effects to cybercrime that has affected the people of sub-Saharan Africa. So Eve is going to take us through some of the challenges and some of the things that have worked in the past. So I'm going to take you through the different challenges uh, that the Sub-Saharan Africa region face with regards to cyber security threats. One of them is poor data security practices. So um, with that, uh, fraudulent parties can access uh, personal data, which leads to identity theft. And with identity theft, it can lead to SIM swap, as Laura mentioned earlier. Secondly, we have skills gap. Uh, with skills gap, uh, most, in, most tertiary institutions do not offer cyber, cyber security courses as part of the curriculum at the moment. And also, employers are not focused in training the different staff that they have with regards to cyber security. Also, uh, there's a lack of awareness part. Uh, most organizations are not aware about the cyber security threats they face on a day-to-day -day activities, which creates uh, a point of uh, failure with regards to managing cyber threats in the different organizations that we have. There's also uh, the poor implementation of cyber security tools. With regards to poor implementation, uh, there's the aspects, as I mentioned earlier, uh, known as uh, as skills gap with skills gap uh, with with a skills gap aspect not many staff are 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 able to manage um, setting up the cyber security solutions in the organizations according to the required format and also most organizations just implement cyber security tools as part of compliance to ascertain uh, risk or gap that was identified in the organizational systems so um, additionally we have uh, most organizations in in sub-saharan if Africa region have a limited budget to uh, cyber security. Uh, 
Uh, it's now 96% of African organizations have an annual budget of $5,000 for cybersecurity. There's also the aspect of use of generic accounts. With generic accounts, um, use of generic accounts and shared passwords. So with generic accounts, um, anyone and everyone, anyone who has access to that particular generic account can access the different uh, uh, systems in the organization that could be one of them could be co-banking platforms uh, in the different banking se sectors that we have and also as laura mentioned earlier this could lead to uh, internal fraud which um, which impacts the organization and leads to loss of revenue and economical and has a, a, a higher impact on the economy for that particular organization there's also the lack of seg segregation of duties with that um, uh, IT secu uh, cyber security is, is part of the IT operations team in that way there's no team that is fully focused to set up our cyber security solutions for the organization okay let's look at what has worked in the past uh, with regards to cyber security awareness in the sub-saharan africa region among the key drivers for that is communities communities offer trainings and also um, offer trainings to the different community members which creates more awareness with regards to cyber security in the region so among the communities are shehaks which laura mentioned earlier and also we have other communities in kenya namely Africa Hakon and KCSFA. There are also communities in Nigeria, that is Ashi Secures and Niger Secon. There's also uh, Hackathon Girls in Gambia. So with these communities, they're key drivers of creating cybersecurity awareness in the region. So with more cybersecurity awareness, uh, different community members are able to adapt to professional cybersecurity certifications that, uh, that create better opportunities in their field for the different community members. Um, additionally, there's also local support. One of the key examples is um, Equal Innovation Hub that offer mentorship and also uh, of, uh, mentorship and training to the local talent. They also offer opportunities uh, to the local talent. We also have Safaricom that have um, a bug bounty program where local security researchers are able to participate in it and identify the different threats uh, with, uh, with regard to the items that are exposed publicly for them to, to look at. There's also, the, um, there's also the aspect of collaborations. So um, with regards to communities, we have local collaborations with the different um, communities in the region. Um, there's, uh, there's, uh, there's also an example of um, cross-continent um, collaboration. One of the key examples is Opcode, who have really supported um, different communities in Kenya and also in Somalia. Other key drivers are conferences, and um, uh, in Kenya uh, last year we had um, we, we annually we have conferences that partake this this uh, the aspect of building creating more awareness with regards to cybersecurity in the region. So uh, last year she has had Hackfest that created more awareness to different members in the community. We also had Africa Hackon, which is an annual conference also. Additionally, outside the, the Kenyan region, we have other regions like Nigeria, who normally have Niger Secon annually to bring together community members and put, uh, create more awareness with regard to cyber security. Yeah. There are also locally built tools. Uh, one of them is Mara Framework that was developed by Christian and uh, that, is, uh, that is mostly focused on mobile security testing. We also have um, uh, OWASP Top 10 uh, Vulnerability Scanner that was developed by one of the security researchers called Munir in the region. We also have um, a security scanner for uh, big, big uh, for big F5, uh, big IP devices, uh, F F5 notably uh, by one of uh, the security researchers in Nigeria by the name Rotimi. 
there are also uh, there are also regulatory bodies that provide uh, guidance with regards to um, uh, cyber security and uh, the key elements that different uh, different organizations have to comply with. One of the key examples in the Eastern Africa region is central banks. Central banks of offer regulatory um, regulatory guidelines to the different banking institutions. So um, the, the different banks in the region are required to 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 do an annual security and IT IT audit for IT audit for those organizations. Yeah. So with regards to that, um, this creates a better landscape, a better a better and robust cyber security um, posture in the region. So um, I now uh, uh, welcome Laura to take us through how we can make uh, the different solutions in the region better. So now that we have looked at one of, uh, some of the things that have worked in the past, how can we make these solutions better? So in the beginning of this presentation, we mentioned the four questions that we came up with to, um, to try and figure out how we can create strategies, create curriculum for the cybersecurity industry in sub-Saharan Africa. We talked about uh, the threat landscape in the region. We looked at some of the uh, technologies that are most used in the region. We also looked at things that have worked in the past. So how do we make the solutions better? The first way, to, uh, or the, the place to start is to have more conversation, which is what we are actually doing now with this conference. We are trying to reach out to more stakeholders, um, namely governments, education institutions, uh, the different experts, cybersecurity experts that we have in the region, and policy makers as well. We are trying to have these conversations with them on how can we further develop the cybersecurity industry in the region. Uh, the second thing is investing in more uh, research and development. This is in terms of the data that w we need in order to come up with better solutions and also the tools that we need. Uh, Eve talked about some of the locally built tools like the MARA framework and uh, the OWASP uh, web application testing fr framework that were developed by uh, members of the community. So we need more research and development in terms of the tools and the solutions that can work in the region. Also supporting regional talents is one way that we can make the cybersecurity uh, uh, stronger in this region. So we talked about how Ikral Innovation Hub um, supports local talent by providing mentorship and also opportunities for them. So we need more organizations, local organizations, to support local ta talent. Um, in the recent past, we've had cases where bigger organizations would invite or hire um, experts from other regions outside of Africa to come and do the different uh, security testing for them. Now we want them to support local talent because what we're saying is we have people who are capable, we have people who have the knowledge and the skills to do this for um, our own organizations. The fourth, and I believe one of the most important things that we should look into is education. Uh, there's lack or very little ed education with regards to um, cybersecurity in the region. I'll give an example of Kenya where we only have two, uh, two education institutions that offer cybersecurity as a course. Now these two are all both private institutions, which means that not everyone can afford to study um, or to take up cybersecurity as a course in, in college. Now, this is why communities step in, but at the end of the day, we also need our um, education system to update their curriculum to include the more recent or um, some of the most commonly, um, te commonly used technologies in this period of time. So we need education institutions to support or to include cybersecurity in their curriculum. And the, the fifth one is cheaper solutions. Now we talked about how most organizations in sub-Saharan Africa only set aside a budget of $5,000 annually to support cybersecurity oper operations. Now this is not nearly enough, uh, but Unfortunately, it also reflects our economy. So we need solutions that are more aff affordable for the different organizations, that are more um, reliable, effective, 
and also reachable. So uh, we, we are asking um, individuals, organizations, communities to come together to, to look at ways or in which we can offer uh, affordable, cheaper, effective solutions to cybersecurity, to, the, to support the cybersecurity market in the sub-Saharan region. So that has been our presentation. We are hoping that you have learned a little about the cybersecurity landscape in the sub-Saharan region, some of the things that have worked, and some of the ways that you could support us or we could learn from you in order to implement proper strategies in the future. Uh, thank you so much, and we now open the floor to questions. Thank you. Hi. Hey. Oh, there we are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you so much, guys, for attending our session today. So we've seen a lot of questions. Um, yes, it is here. So there's some questions. Um, the Last one by Madi. Um, I think we've answered that. Is mobile money meaning like paying with your phone, like Apple Pay? Um, so, as we said, um, There was also a question on, um, can you provide examples of solutions that leverage to protect uh, consumers by using and pressing? Sorry about that. Uh, there's a delay in the feedback, so we don't know when. To start, but yeah, as you said, our, our M-Pesa money, it's mobile-based money transfer, and you can pay for goods using, uh, we have two numbers, we have pay bills. Yeah. Can you hear hear us too? Uh, yes, if you can go ahead. So um, I wanted to respond to a question on what are the different ways of of um, of uh, how we protect uh, consumers as when using impressed. So we have uh, two concrete ways. One is a platform called Hakikisha, which means uh, it gives you a platform to confirm the person you're sending money to or you're transferring money to. This enables someone to confirm exactly that the, send, the person, the recipient of that particular um, amount is the same person that they are intending to send to. There's also, if by any chance you send money and it's already been transferred to a wrong number, the support number, two, three, four, that you send a particular transaction that is wrong, so with that you're able to get a reinvestment within a limit of one minute. Yeah.
there was also a question with regard to five thousand the budget. So we we dry we dry we we establish that figure for uh, the different such documents that you're able to find online. The, the right? So we just share the links to that uh, and this. Uh, yeah, so there's uh, the question of does the use of open security, open source security tools help with the needing cheaper tools problem? Um, yes, there's that, and it does help a little bit. Um, it does help a little bit, but some of these tools are not really helpful to what we do sometimes. So uh, we talked about the Mara framework and how it's, um, we use it for mobile application security testing, and we talked about some of the other tools that were developed by the OWASP community in Kenya. So these tools are very helpful, but sometimes they're limited in terms of what we can achieve using them. Yeah. I think uh, what kind of concerns do you do you have about using foreign investments, US, EU, China, to support information infrastructure in SSA? I think with regards to that, um, there is already an ongoing way, an ongoing uh, conversation with a different organization like uh, Huawei, Cisco, to support us on the different defense mechanisms that we have in the region. And most of us are consumers of the products that they have to create a defense in the platforms for the different organizations. Uh, there's one last question I can pick. Uh, what fault controls are in place for the, for the electronic money transfer? So for that one, there's always a cap for the different uh, transactions that uh, different consumers are supposed to have. So if it pass, surpasses that cap, uh, there's always uh, an element of fault that is detected. That there's also the element of, uh, let's say, uh, consumer transactions more than um, more than five to ten transactions with the same amount in the same time. So in that way you're able to pick a fraudulent activity from the different um,
um, guys, we'll get to answer your questions. Please reach out to us um, and leave out our um, Twitter details so that we can finish up this conversation. Uh, we're going to wrap up now. We only have a few seconds left. But yes, that's our Twitter handle. And I'll share Eve's as well. <laughs>